as a young actor, you're dying to work and you're never working. I would have a year and a half with nothing. It was awful. And when I worked, I thought I was off. This is not it. This is not it. And somehow I learned that it was going to be a quarter turn of the screw that did it. That made it, oh, it's not far away. It's like right over there. But, but it would be hell. And I was talking to a cousin of mine who said, you know, um, I talk to you when you're working and I talk to you when you're not working. And both times you're terribly unhappy. You should choose one time to be happy. I thought, you know, you, it's a good point. I'll, I'll do it when I'm working then. Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Peter Friedman is an actor. He sat down with me following strict safety precautions on a bench in Central Park in New York City to talk about the work. I know this differs depending on the size of the role and the type of role and if it's stage or, or film. I know all that matters, but is there a typical first step that you take when you've landed a role to begin to wrap your arms around how to play it? I, I usually do a fair amount of, of, of research about, about whatever is being discussed or, or viewing or visiting. When I was younger, you know, if you played a lawyer, you found somebody who was a lawyer. Yeah. And you say, can I come over? And you go, yeah, it's, it's everything, I th- everything I thought was going to be here. So I really didn't need to come except what's that baby toy over on your desk? Oh, my wife visited with the, you know, that I wouldn't have thought. Amongst all these papers, a little bright blue, <laughs> you know, bird or something. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Yeah. That's what you get from when you visit. Yeah. The stuff that you wouldn't know. How do you apply then that little toy? You know what I mean? Like this is something I still don't understand. Yeah. Like so that that told you something. It 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 gave you a clue into the mystery of whatever this person is, or playing this person that you would never have normally have. But what do you do with that? I, I guess you you go oh oh lawyer a second, and he carries it. He carries his life as you would into your workplace. You know. Yeah. Th- those kinds of little clues. But how is that playable is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> how I see. is that playable? Um, how does that tangibly change your work? I can't tell you. That's probably why you're a good, good actor. <laughs> I can't, it's just, just, you just have it, I don't know, Do, doing research for uh, a Simon Gray play about Cambridge students. So I went over and spent a few days in Cambridge, and uh, the guy was the guy I was playing was a philosophy teacher, and so I went to a they called the Moral Science Club, and there's Robert, you know, 18 year old Robert, and he's you know he's leading the discussion because he's the president of the moral you know, and he's got his leg insouciantly crossed over one, and there's no elastic at the top of his socks. And they're just like, gotta have it, right? Yeah. He's so smart. He doesn't care about yeah. what the fuck he puts on. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. Is They're just little things that you wouldn't have thought of. You know? But I, I don't know how it makes it playable. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just stuff yeah. that adds to the picture that makes you feel a little bit more, a little closer to the subject. Yeah. I guess it gives you confidence, a, a confidence more than anything else the courage to, to feel like you can play it? Uh, I, I would say yes, with it, unless you're saying to push for something. No, you, you, you can step back from it because it's, it's all a part of it. It's all around you. You don't have to work so hard because yeah. there are these little details that are helping you tell the story, hopefully. Tell me how you came into this whole endeavor to begin with. I always performed as a kid, you know, little plays in the house and all that stuff. Uh, it didn't seem like a jump at all. It seemed like this is where I was going. That's the end of the story. <laughs> and did you go and get yourself training? After I got out of um, college where I was a psych major at Hofstra University, but spent all my time doing drama stuff, um, I, I worked for a few years 
And I realized that I did not like how I acted. Mm. I, I sort of felt I was bad. So I took myself out and found an acting class. And um, I was doing that for about two and a half, three years, something like that. So the idea of wanting to improve. Yeah. That, that, so it wasn't just like a, a, a hobby or something like you. you uh -uh. No, there was a day I was carrying uh, groceries up to my my Hell's Kitchen uh, apartment. And uh, and I stopped on the stairs and I went and the bottom fell out. I went, I stink. <laughs> no, it was momentous for me. But what made you want to improve so badly? Like what, like uh, someone else might just give up. Be like, I stink. Wow. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> it just seemed like the only way to go. Like I, I should probably get help. And so I did. <laughs> and how did that help, though? I mean, like, did it really, did it really make you realize what what your bad habits were, or something, or 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 or, uh, or did it just give you the tools? It did give me tools, and and a whole lot more. Um, first of all. It, it, the idea that you're not right for every role that never occurred to me you're supposed to play anything play yeah. play play well, th this is being 25 or 6 or something like that yeah. um, I thought oh well, that's right there's some roles I might not be suited for and it never occurred to me great thing to <laughs> right <laughs> so it almost well, you know we're always we know that our only tool of control sometimes is to say no and we're told you can't say no, especially when we're young. You've got to just do, do, do yeah. to get on the map. But what if you're doing in the wrong thing? You won't get on the map that way, I wouldn't think. But who knows? You know? Were you starting to think about what your type was back then? No. Anything I, I felt once I got the idea, you go up for the stuff that you have an impulse for, a response to. You're Same with material. You read a play, you go, I, Twelfth Night, I don't fucking get it. I'm staying away from it. I don't, I got nothing for this play, which is done probably more than any other in the world. Yeah. You know, there's always, or, or, or there's probably one going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. I don't get why we're laughing at Malvolio. I don't get what's so funny about Fest. I don't get it. Fuck it. So you're allowed to, to not respond to material you don't respond to. I've gotten a little in trouble. There have been a couple of times when I've read things that go, I don't get it. And you know, it becomes the biggest hit of the, of the theatrical season. Okay, okay, so you're wrong in yeah. 50 years, once yeah. or twice. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put up with it. I mean, even if you did get it though, you might not have been right for it e yeah. either, yeah. right? Exactly. exactly. I did have somebody though tell a story of not getting it, going for an audition. He got the role. He pleaded with them, saying, "I don't get this." It was John Christopher Jones. Do you know him? Yeah. <laughs> he said, "I don't." I, it was Tony Kirshner's play. It, 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 it was a weird Tony <laughs> Kirshner play. And they said, "No, you're going to do it. You're great." He said, "No," and he called his agent to get him out of it. <laughs> wow. And then he did it, and he did it confusingly, and. Eventually, after many, many weeks, it sort of started to make sense, but not really fully. People are loving it. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah. I don't know if I could do that. It just seems like a terrible time, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. You go, we call them fire door nights when you really are hideous and you can't go through the, you can't leave the regular way. You have to find an extra door. I, was I don't know how he got through that. Fire door. That's great. Get me out of here. Take me to the Muppets. The Muppets. Wasn't that fun? I was shocked to find this. Yes, and here's the cool thing. Here's the collateral that I get. At the Museum of Movie Image, yeah. they've got a Jim Henson exhibit. Yes. And there's a tape of that Jim brought, Jim Henson brought on the Tonight Show to publicize the, the, the Muppet Show. And it was of us with the camera pulled back to show how we did rag mop. And it's my voice that is the vocal. Oh. So I'm in a museum, man. That's awesome. With a mop. Oh. 
<laughs> at 27 or something like that. So how did you get to that? Like, how, like exactly. isn't that a whole other uh, skill set? I, what no, what is that? I, you, Oh no! I, I always did. I'm right now. I'm in in quarantine. I one of my little art projects is uh, no. Okay, my only art project is making uh, a miniature version of my childhood uh, hand puppet stage, which uh, I had hanging as displays in my in our bedroom till January when we moved to much smaller space. So it was time to take this 60-year-old cardboard oh. edifice and throw it away. But I took pictures of it all, and I'm going to make it a miniature. So um, I've always done puppets and marionettes oh. when I was a kid. Always did. Um, Love that stuff. And when I was in the Phoenix, the New Phoenix Rep Company with Marilyn Sokol that first year, um, she said, you should, you know, we would play with voices, and then she said, you should try out for a gym. And she told me that she had done some work with Jim and Frank and uh, Frank Oz. Yeah. And, and she gave me the number to call and they were just having auditions to do a one week workshop to get a whole bunch of new people in their stable because they had a Broadway show they were planning. They were starting that SNL thing right. at the, for the first season of that. Um, and they had a bunch of other projects they were thinking of. And uh, I auditioned with Jim and Frank in their offices on 67th. And um, they were, Frank, Frank is so quick. They put a puppet on your hand and you, you're, you're improvising with Frank. And I'm not, I am not an improviser. Right. But uh, they wanted a down east accent. And I'm moving so, I'm thinking so slowly. At one point I said, you know, hold it. <laughs> as the character and and, I, you know, and we're waiting a couple of seconds and Frank says I'm still holding <laughs> you know, they're very adorable anyway I got into that and then extended they did it week after week for a while through the summer I think oh. um, and it was the same summer that I started this acting class mm. and they were two different disciplines and I got I don't know if I got reamed out, but I got lectured to. Um, because what we're doing in the Muppets is being clever. Oh. And what we're doing in the acting class is being truthful. Oh. And I crossed over the line in class and I got, you know. So you're saying it went, it went that way. Like, like the Muppet muscle was overpowering the other muscle rather than the other way around. Well, it was the other muscle. It, uh, mother, other muscle is so subtle and and yeah. deeper, right? Um, course, and yeah. I had just started both of those things, and I hadn't developed the the, the deeper muscle, right. yet, you know, to go low, yeah. to go quiet. Yeah. You know? yeah. So what did you do when you got ringed out? Did you stop? I got the idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I kept, I kept my, you know, witticisms to myself. And yeah. <laughs> went truthful. Yeah. I, it made sense to me, and yeah. was, that was okay. Is is there anything though that you learned from that muscle from the Muppets that you still apply to the other? Sure, I, I, I can't. I'm not witty. <laughs> I'm not articulate. And I, it's a and negative I can't improvise. No, negative knowledge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stay away. Want to be in an improv class? No. <laughs> no. Right. Wait, but this is wait. We have to skip ahead now, though, because I'm, I heard that there's improvisation on Succession. Yes, there, there, there is. Does that scare you when, like, if they want to start a scene with some improvisation? Are you, do you panic? Y yes, it scares me, but I, I, I do it. Um, I'm not asked so much. It was in the pilot. I, I think Adam McKay, who directed the pilot, uh, there was one scene where he wanted me to ad lib something. As I'm addressing, okay, so we're it's Jeremy and his work guys, and Dad is at home. Jeremy's in charge. He feels it's way yeah, you know when yeah. the su know succession yeah, yeah. was going to happen was going to yeah. be passing over to him. He thinks and. Uh, Brian drops in. Yeah. And I was supposed to say something when I see him that was not written. Uh -huh. So I said, you know, uh, uh, who, who ordered the pizza? 
uh, you know, stuff like <laughs> yeah. that. And I was having a good time. Yeah. But it was it wasn't uh, financial jargon. Yeah. Jeremy can do having been in the Big Short. He's he studies deeply, and and he could, you know, talk about amortization and yeah. not me. Yeah. That scares the hell out of me. Right. Right. And just to have that, I mean, because if he's immersed in that, then he has it at the ready. That's right. And does that keep happening, though, on that show? Like, like, do they want it? Because Brian was talking about how they start scenes, kind of. They want to get into scenes improvisationally and then kind of get get into the script then. Does this put you at like, a, oh, no, please, guys, don't. Let's it, not do oh, it. We need help. If some of us who are not versed and, and you know, first of all, I, I, I haven't been asked that. I'm I'm I'm. I'm on the periphery of the tapestry, right? Right, right, right. Um, but I'm, I, if I had to, I would absolutely ask one of the guys around saying, give me something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And, if, and in my character's case, it would probably be something with jargon in it, and I would need something truthful. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, are you just thinking to, at, at that time as a young man just totally about just the stage? Like, there, there, there yeah. wasn't another, there wasn't, an idea of like oh, film television terrifies me. Film and television terrifies me. I, I I I think when I was doing Brooklyn Bridge in the early nineties, and I went to work every day, that fear went away because you know you're you're part of the the group making that shoe every day, and I clock in, and you do your stuff, and I'm not saying unimaginative. I'm I'm saying that I I love doing it and I love thinking about it, but I lost my fear because we're all working on this together. The cameraman is now a friend, not somebody I have to prove something to. The, you know, they're all, you like being all part together. of a company. You, yeah. You, yeah, exactly. The, the most frightening thing for me is uh, coming in for one day on a film. Don't, do, 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 do not, do not ask me to do that. And the reality of well-oiled machine, oh. you're coming in. Oh, I hate that, I hate it. It's yeah. awful. Yeah. New kid. Uh -huh. No. Yeah, that's new. That really is new. Don't want to do it. Yeah, <laughs> new kid. No fun. No fun at all. Yeah. So yeah, it was all about stage. But there must have been tons of times when you were doing that, coming in, just playing the doctor. That's right. The the clipboard with the uh, uh, the clipboard with the doctor. We call them. Friend Craig Cole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gives, Give, giving Meryl, out the diagnosis. Meryl sweep the bad news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you how do you deal with that though? Because th th there's going to be a lot of people <laughs> listening that are the doctor or an equivalent of that yeah. that that are that are feeling the same new kid thing. How do you get over it? Do you do you introduce yourself to everyone? Do you start oh, or do you just act like oh you've no. been there? <laughs> oh no, I don't want to go there. I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to think about it. It was, it was awful. It's awful. Yeah. If it happened tomorrow, it would be awful. Wow. I might say no. Wow. In fact, I did say no something a couple of months ago. Something that's going to be a very high-profile film, but it was a one-day thing, and I thought my my stomach is going to drop out. I don't wow. want to do that to myself at this age. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, and it's great. You don't have to. This is what's, what's great now. You well, can say no. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it'd be a good idea to do it, but I at first I felt I'm not the right guy. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. It's if I felt like I was the right guy, I probably would have done it. Yeah, because that gives you a certain security. But but it had two strikes, and I went, Man, I can't do that. One of my obsessions, kind of on this show, is Annie Baker. Annie Baker plays Annie Baker actors. You're an Annie Baker actor. I I'm so pleased to be called that. <laughs> <laughs> and this is circle mirror. Transformation. I talked to Deirdre O'Connell about this. Yep. She talked about how that was very hard, but very fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and talked and about a rehearsal at your house. Oh, my God. That's you right. Remember we, that? We had to close down and then start up again. And we just did a little, little run through at my house. Yeah. Well, tell me, tell me the story of this whole thing. I mean, with, with the, at this time, you didn't know who Annie Baker was, right? No, I, I did because... I had done a play called Body Awareness before oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. At the Atlantic, at the Atlantic Small Theater Underground, and uh, with Joe Beth Williams. So she had already known about you, obviously. Then. I yeah. Guess, so and I think somebody who did the workshop at Sundance 
couldn't make it, and that's how I got in. I think that's the deal. You'll have to ask Annie. Yeah. But wow, what a lucky thing, because that was my first time working with Sam. Now, with Circle, now, when you, when you see what this play is <laughs> and what has to be done. Yeah, and I've seen two productions uh, other than ours. I've seen two productions. And uh, I can see people walking out going, this, this one, the what? Because <laughs> they don't mind the darkness. Mm. They just do the exercises and the comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that we could, I could get up and down 60 times in a night now. <laughs> so, so it's constant exercise, it's, it's, exercises. <laughs> it's on. standing up and lying. Yeah, and then there are these intermittent exercises as we go through the weeks of this class. Yeah. And then private conversations where stuff is learned. It's just, it's beautifully constructed. Yeah. Why, why do you think Deirdre had a hard time or, or, or found it hard? Uh, I, I too. I mean, they posted the, the list of scenes backstage on the wall. But I carried a, a, a cheat sheet of it in my pocket. My own, say, this is what's happening now. Cause I, there are like 35 scenes, right? Or whatever it is. <laughs> what's next? This is the one where you, and maybe in the last two weeks of the run, I didn't use it. Wow. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know what was happening next. Wow. Same thing happened with... Yeah, that's what she was saying, yes. Yeah, we didn't have... Did, well, no, I didn't, didn't know, know what happened next. I needed that sheet before, <laughs> after every blackout. What the... What, what, uh, you know, what's happening? But the same thing happened in uh, 12 Angry Men. Mm. There's something about that, even though there's only one lights on and one lights off, uh, I didn't know what was going to happen on the next page Whoa. for so long because you have one line every page it seems like burp, yeah burp, and then you have a spurt and then you're quiet and you don't know i didn't know wow what's going to happen next until maybe the last two weeks of the run and so the only thing that made you know is your cue line basically <laughs> right? is that right well no but i think you know uh, somewhat before that you go oh well, we're going that way okay okay guy I'm, I'm, I'm with you but that also sounds like that would be kind of exciting because it would keep you present yes it did yeah it did. It kept me so present for the hour and a half that after I had a big, sh I had a big tirade at the end, a big racist yeah, yeah, yeah. tirade. And uh, after I sat down and my chair was facing upstage, I, I had to fight sleep because I was, I had <laughs> paid attention so much yeah. that I was gone. Wow. Because you were. felt like you could relax at that moment after uh -huh. that. <laughs> I could. I had like maybe one more thing to do. <laughs> I had to like pinch myself, you know. So when that thing kept being extended, yeah. were, were you like mad? That oh <laughs> no, we were so we were so proud. Yeah, we were so, oh we loved that shit. Yeah, we loved that thing. Sam Stillman is a friend of mine. He's a very good actor, director. When he found out that I was trying to get you on this show, he said, "I saw him in Hamlet. <laughs> he was amazing." He was seamlessly funny, human, modern, dangerous, sympathetic, heightened, and natural. <laughs> it was crazy. That's his quote. <laughs> now, all of those things, can you see a, a thread that leads back to work done on, on that from all of those adjectives? No, I'm, I'm, I'm gratified. I'm not saying I, I aimed to put those things in there. I yeah. just wanted to be somebody who you, you could recognize. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what we're all doing at my age. We're trying to, we're, we're, you know, Deirdre and all of these people, not that she's my age, but I'm older, but um, we're trying to get close to a human. Yeah. You know, it takes all these years, though I've seen plenty of 20 year old actors, you know, on stage do stuff I could never have dreamt of doing. It's so subtle, so beautiful. Mm. But that, but that's my my goal. My aim is to, to get as close to, you know, someday I'll get there. And we should say you played Polonius, right? Yep. You must have seen countless Poloniuses. Exactly. <laughs> and I said, I don't want to do that. Right. Even, what good, does that one, look even like? good ones, maybe. You were like, I don't still... want to be yeah, Right. The daughter. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do that. 
But the only the only restriction I put on myself, and you should try this at home, get out the script and do it. Um, the neither a borrower nor a lender be stuff, yes. which Sam cut greatly, mm. and and it was helpful. I wanted to make sure, and it slipped out once or twice during the run. I wanted to make sure I never pointed my finger, not oh. once. And you try, you, it's hard. Because I, just when you said those words of the speech, I'm picturing a person pointing. Of course, <laughs> don't do this, do it. Never, not, you know, to not do it once. Yeah. It's attached to something else. I can't describe it now, because I'm sort of far away from it. Um, but it was all, it, it eventually got to be all of a piece and I was okay with it. And, and his love for his son, you know, was, yeah. How, how how bereft he'll be when this guy goes. Okay, okay, you gotta go. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I yeah. love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And and it just seems like then that director and 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 probably the other actors were uh, your decision or your choice was supported. I, right. I, I, yes, and I, I. It's so wonderful to work with Sam because. Uh, Every time I would suggest something, he'd go, no, it's this. i go, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I would, you always take a suggestion from Sam. Mm. He's right. He's always right. Mm. And I'm often wrong. Does that often happen with directors for you, though? Are they helpful? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, today's, today's directors, I find, are wonderful. You're talking about the stage. You're not talking about... Yeah, I, I, I would ask the directors uh, on the TV thing and the writers, tell me what you what you want, what is it supposed to be here? Yeah. I, have, um, I have no ego about that. I want to know what they want to get across mm -hmm. and I want to put it across for them if yeah, I just need to understand it. Yeah. You know, and they'll tell me. Yeah. And I'm grateful. Yeah. <laughs> and then I do it. Clarity. 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 Yeah, because I, I probably am in a fog about this particular moment, so I'm going to ask you, yeah. what did you mean? Because there's no time in TV, right? There's just no time. That's what gets me. So you're coming from the stage. You're doing great work on the stage. You're doing rehearsals night after night, and then you get to, to, to a TV. There's not even a rehearsal. You're meeting the person playing your wife the day of. <laughs> I can't be getting me nervous. You're getting me nervous. That's exactly what. If the thing in the, the, the guy in Twelve Angry Men, I would never be asked to play the tough guy. But with a month or two weeks, I think somebody had left and I was brought in late. With two weeks to go, I could put it, you know, simmer it. But to do it in a day, that's why I didn't take this film thing I referred to. Some some tough guy in a day. I can't do it in a day. I can't get there I don't know who that is really mm. that mm. kind of brutish guy yeah yeah. I don't know how to do it can you tell me something that you worried the hell about as a young actor that only now do you realize was a senseless worry I don't know if it it came, it came sooner than now thank okay, god yeah so I wasn't <laughs> down with it for 50 years or whatever um, as a young actor you're dying to work and you're never working I would have year and a half with nothing mm. it was awful it was awful and when I worked I thought it was awful they're like, they're like I thought like this is never I, it, it, this is not it this is not it and somehow somehow I learned that it was going to be a quarter turn of the screw that did it Mm. that made it oh it's not far away it's like right over there but but it would be hell and I was talking to a cousin of mine who said you know um, I talk to you when you're working and I talk to you when you're not working and both times you're terribly unhappy you should choose one time to be happy <laughs> I thought you know it's a good point I'll, I'll do it when I'm working then and from that point on I, I just didn't angst as much I, I think wow. I took a little piece of advice wow <laughs> but you have to tell a little bit more about that turn of the screw because that that's a very interesting yes. thing yes it's very important I th and I think it's probably it with, with everybody um, you so think you're, you're a you're, million miles away you're imagining that the adjustment needed on this is huge huge and, or, or you maybe even you're saying wow they made a mistake even casting me oh uh, yeah 
and and but but you don't realize that it just that little turn yeah of something but what does that really mean could that mean that you're just not hitting the lines right or is mm. it more of a bigger thing about a, the approach of the character i can't remember what was going on in those instances where i learned that it wasn't a big distance yeah um i i remember one where where uh, I, we were doing um simon gray's common pursuit at long wharf for its first production here and uh simon came over in the third week and you know it was terrible nothing english about it nothing that he thought for the characters and stuff like that and i was distraught so uh we made a date he and i to meet at the algonquin in the bar there where he was staying and have splits of champagne on a tuesday morning or a monday morning and with with like four words he straightened me out Wow. And I I wrote them down probably in the script, but I can't. Remember. It's not. Da, 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 it's diffident. But blah, 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 blah. I went. Ah, uh, okay, I'm good. Thanks. He straightened me out right like that, and I had a wonderful time. Right like that. So what's the lesson there, though? That 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 you can't uh, you can't keep hammering away at the nail when the head is off it. You have to <laughs> pull. Some, I mean, I'm trying to come up with an analogy here are hitting themselves about this like yes and and beating themselves up yes and, about and something that is so that's why we need directors and we need to ask authors I, i'm i'm all for knowing what the author wants i very rarely ask for any text changes i just say what do you mean i just want to know mm -hmm. what you mean mm -hmm. you know the cl clarity for you will be the saving will we'll get you out of the trouble because then you can do all the other things well yeah if, if you can attach it to what what you've already established and, and cre you know keep the links going yeah um w w starting with annie's stuff with the ahs and the ums and the er everything's important and i and i and i try you know I, I i probably don't have more than one perfect text performance in a run you know but i try to have every single thing and no additions of my own in there my job is to make what's on the page, you know, work as well as it does on the page. Some actors that I've talked to, you'd be shocked to find how they are still not relaxed about getting work. You bet. You bet. <laughs> it's just shocking. These are people who you would think they don't have to worry about anything else in life. But it seems like you have a flow in these last years. I you? know. I <laughs> know. You. It's the best part of my career, the best part of my life, right. probably. I, I, it was all fluke to fluke for the first 40 years. You know, it was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Very painful. So the question is, are are you still worrying? <laughs> I'm not worrying at the moment. That's got to be great. It is great. It is. It's. It's a wonderful time. And it. And it all has to do with the nonprofit theater. Frankly, um, you know, back in right after Twelve Angry Men, which I didn't get, I, which which was the first time I had worked, uh, probably in a year and a half. Then, you know. Mm. It was still happening, um, and after after twelve hundred men, I I thought, oh, I, I can't make a dime. I'm not, you know, I'm going to go out to California and do that six weeks thing twice a year at pilot season when there was pilot season, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I get nothing. I'd be away from my small daughter for yeah. six weeks at a time, six weeks at a time, ha making her mother, you know, be on duty for that long, who was who was absolutely gracious about doing it because I was foundering. I was getting yeah. nowhere. Um, and I come back having got nothing except me, you know, maybe an episode of something that might pay for the trip, but it was awful. And, and mm -hmm. my wife now suggested at that point, I was beginning to see her and she suggested, why don't you do these, these off Broadway things that are being offered to you? I think Annie's body awareness was mm -hmm. one of the first in that in that slew, and you know, I, 
I, what can I do? I'll, I'll make 300 a week and mm -hmm. I'll just, I'll just stay here and do it. I won't miss my child's uh -huh. years and it'll be go, you know, I'll find something. And it's added up to this. And I met Annie and Sam Gold and, and, and David Cromer and Max Poser and, and Amy Hurst. I was like, and Kaufman, Carolyn Cantor, these, I love these guys. Yeah. They have sustained me. I <laughs> really, for yeah. the past, past 15 years, they have taught me more about what I'm supposed to know <laughs> than I knew. That just sounds like you made a choice, which comes up over and over on the show. You made a choice for the work, not for some kind of other choice for your career or some kind of thing. And it paid off to your career. It's, it, yeah, I didn't think it was, but at the moment it seems to be paying off. Um, and now I'm, I miss the nonprofit, not just because of the, the pandemic, but I, because of the TV commitments, um, I don't quite know how to fit that stuff in, but I, I certainly look forward to going back to it. Nice 100 seat, 200 seat theater. It's okay with me. Yeah. Great stuff happens there. Peter Friedman, thank you <laughs> so much. You're welcome. This was fun, thanks. Back to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of IFP, the Independent Filmmaker Project. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts.